Welcome to DXB today. As the countdown towards the end of COP28 continues, we still have some amazing highlights you do not want to miss out on. Let's see what is coming up on the show today. It's almost over, but I went to COP28 to check out a bunch of activities that are family friendly and free of charge to inspire you in case you want to go check them out too. And our very own Dua went down and met the CEO of Tabrid at COP28 to dive into sustainable cooling solutions in the region. And of course, we've got an amazing musician to keep you guys all entertained at home. Super, super talented, and we're pumped about that. But guys, yes. COP's almost over. I can't believe it. I feel like, are, are you copped out yet, Ash? Oh, I, I love the way you put that. I personally haven't had a chance to go down just yet, but then I've been working towards COP outside because I've interviewed so many in, important people who've come down. Nearly 97,000 delegates registered to come down to COP. I personally had the privilege to meet spiritual leader and uh, the founder of Save the Soil Movement, uh, Sadhguru, and it was such an honor meeting him. I love what a visionary he is. He gave me such a fresh perspective on things. And overall, it's been a very, very busy week. And I heard you were down at COP. How was your experience? I was down there and I have to say, oh, maybe very nostalgic with the expo, but um, I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, there's a, uh, a very positive energy in the air. Everyone there feels like they're just taking initiative. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a real sense of purpose. Uh, everyone's very goal oriented, uh, but I was excited. I really wanted to catch Basim Yusuf, which I didn't get to. <laughs> I didn't get to do that, unfortunately. I was very excited to see yeah. him. Um, we, I tried a vegan shawarma which I was excited about. I checked out some sustainable fashion. There was so much going on and you're going to be seeing I really wanted to check out Stella McCartney's sustainable fashion, but I did hear a lot about so many plant-based outlets. So I decided if ever I do go down to COP28, I'll make sure I've eaten in advance. Yeah, that's what I wanted to discuss <laughs> as well. Like going down to COP28, there's a lot happening. Like you said, 97,000 uh, delegates came as well in the blue zone, but also 400,000 guests signed up for the green zone, which is insane. From day one, COP28 has been breaking records compared to any other COP that has been happening But see, there. that was the problem for me. I got to COP and all I wanted to do was go into the blue zone. I did not have accreditation for it. And I was like, come on, get me in. Someone sneak me yeah. in. I felt like I was missing out on a lot of the action there. But yeah, there's, so there's many, an amazing so energy So many wonderful things have come out of it. But can we just talk about the amount of money that has been raised just in the first day itself? Of course, the UAE pledged over $100 million towards uh, developing countries who are suffering from uh, climate change. And also some of the other countries that have pledged money, Germany with 100 million, Britain with 60 million pounds, United States with 17.5 million dollars, and uh, Europe with nearly 225 million euros. I mean, so much money has been raised. I was expecting a little more from the US, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, I know you listed them right there, but I was like, well, what are you guys doing? You got your own but, thing going But on personally, here. I'm very proud of the UAE because yes, not the only did they pledge the 100 million dollars, but they also set a very, very important example for other countries to make mm -hmm. meaningful contributions contributions towards uh, COP28 and climate action in general. Overall, I feel like this has been an amazing example of collective effort. Absolutely. Yeah, and we still have a lot to discuss with our guest co-host, so let's see who's here with us in the studio. Hi, I'm Nina Zandnia, and I'm so excited to co-host the tonight's show. Nina will join us right here in just a little bit in the studio. But first, I went down to Dubai Expo City to explore some of the exhibits and installations that you can get involved with at COP28. Check this out. Honestly, there is so much to do at COP28 that it's hard to know where to start. So today, we're going to do the exploring for you and inspire you with some activities that are not only family friendly, but free of charge. So let's check them out. So I'm here with Amber, the founder of Extreme Hangout, and I have to say, this place is buzzing with excitement and activity. Tell me what it's all about, and it's your third year running, right? That's right, Dina. Thank you so much. Um, yes, this is our third year. We started in, uh, in Glasgow. We were in Egypt last year as well. Um, but this is the first time that we've become part of officialdom and we're inside the green zone, which is one of the main areas for the United Nations uh, that they invite people to come to. and primarily NGOs and companies uh, to come and get involved in the climate conversation. And we created a space which is hopefully bridging uh, the scientists, the business communities, the politicians, 
bringing them together with young people, with families, so that they have a place which feels accessible and fun to come into and, and learn more about the climate conversation and hopefully start to hold our leaders more to account and show an interest in what's going on. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Do you have workshops here? What kind of activities can people get involved in? Certainly, we've got fantastic workshops being hosted here and some of them are art-based workshops and we've got um, lots of panel discussions going on as well. And then over on the main stage um, at the moment, Arizona Muse, who's a fabulous model, um, who uh, has made that sort of voyage of discovery from figuring out that in fact her fashion has all come from a farm. Okay, we're about to try an escape room like no other. Can we escape climate change? The mangrove edition, come with me. Okay, Arabella, I just tried my first nature escape room. Is that what I would call it? What would I call this? Yeah, it's a climate change themed escape room, the mangrove edition. I did introduce it like that, to Very be well. fair. So yeah, that was a really interesting idea, new concept. What was, um, how did this all come about? So what you did in there is a little taste of what you can do for real out in the field, in the real mangrove forest in our programs. So we wanted to give people a little taste of what life's like when you're volunteering with us for our program and uh, turn it into a fun and engaging way to, sort of, you know, reach out to people and grow the movement. Okay, I've discovered yet another activation. I'm here with Meher and you're about to tell me the gift to nature. What is this all about over here? Yeah, so we're standing here by our um, nature themed escape room and we have a little activity here for people to do while they're waiting in line. Um, we have, uh, we're, we're asking people to write a letter to nature. Um, so it's essentially, you know, take your time to reflect, think about uh, what nature gives back to you, uh, which is, yeah, a really interesting exercise once people actually, people actually start, start, start thinking about that, you know, nature is all around us it's the air that we breathe it's the food that we eat um, nature does a lot for us what more can we do for nature as well to make sure that we're protecting nature um, what better time to do that than at COP28 in the green zone here so yeah we have um, we have um, our moringa seeds here and once you've written your letter you roll it up um, you put it in this compostable uh, pot here we have some soil as well, um, and a moringa tree is a native tree in the UAE. Um, and we are then gonna go and plant this in the wadis. Okay, Hajar, I'm ready to be the change. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about Swarm here. So basically, this is an, uh, an art piece made by Leonie Bradley. It is dedicated to the low biodiversity issue. So lately there has been a rapid decline of bees and pollinators and this was linked to the loss of nature and biodiversity. So basically Leon Bradley dedicated this uh, piece of art to this issue. So we're asking everyone here at COP28 to write a pledge on this paper and then form a bee origami and then hang it, hang it up there. Whether you're looking to join a panel, do some eco arts and crafts, or catch a performance, the options here at COP28 are endless. And they all have one shared goal, to create a more sustainable future. Enjoy. Now our co-host today is a media entrepreneur, an SCG speaker headlining at major networks around the globe. Please welcome the lovely Nina, Zania, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor for me to sit in the studio with you, the three of you that I literally watching every day. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? We've been busy talking about COP and you've been living here for 18 years. So I'm going to just start off with this question for you. How do you feel that the UAE has been affected by COP28? Oh my God, it is so amazing. I think this is the most important platform that happened, obviously after Expo in the like 52 years in the UAE. What UAE has achieved and Dubai to bringing all the nations together with their technologies, ideas and forming 
this platform and generating so much funding, so much money in such a short time, mm -hmm. it's something that never happened anywhere yeah. in the world. If you think about it, we're a nation of 52 years. When I say we, I classify myself part of the UAE because I've seen it all. Yeah. I saw it grow. I, I've seen everything expanding from every single sector and it is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, that's something I can relate to you, Nina, because I myself, I was raised here yeah, Venus since I was four years old. So I also feel like I'm part of this country. And as, a, as an SDG speaker, can you tell us a little bit more about your role in everything? Of course. So I've been working with public sector, which is a sector that works with the Sustainable Development Goals in United Nations and UN Women. So we are dealing with uh, their media campaign, the family office uh, corporations. We are fund managing. We are putting um, all these campaigns together to reach worldwide for the audience that are non political. Mm -hmm. For example, the general audience, you know, when everything we're talking, for example, in the United Nations or during the SDGs, it's topics that the general audience don't understand. So we try to simplify and reach to all the platforms and ages through like social media, all the different platforms, uh, sorry, all the different platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, media agency, advertisement. And in that way, we reach the general public. public. Just making it more accessible to everyone. I really appreciate that. Exactly. Because I do find that these subjects can seem very daunting to people. Exactly. And so you, yeah, good for you. Exactly. And you know, it, 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 like our, this generation that's coming up, we have such a privilege because when I grew up, we didn't have social media. So we didn't know about all this important matters that are happening in the world and how serious it is, such as climate change. Yes. But now because of the social media impact, we can teach our children and they can themselves see it, read it, understand sure. it. And then in turn of that, they can make actions yes. towards it, which I think it's quite incredible. And having COP28 here in Dubai, like we discussed earlier, yes. they've uh, touched on gender equality as well. And we've got so many different topics every single day that they've been tackling other than climate change. So it's not just climate change, change based. Yes, it so is can, the first yeah. time. How important is it to have something like this? It is so important because it never been done before. Because normally at COPs, you only discuss about climate change, but with UAE bringing up the gender equality and also about food, agriculture, mm -hmm. exactly. and youth, promoting youth and the social media impact. It is so important because it makes the topic more broad mm -hmm. and interesting for different groups. So this was not meant to be for only one demographic. Nina, I really want to ask you, there was a lot of focus on sustainable fashion and this is the first time ever COP has taken this uh, topic to champion. And as a former designer yourself, what is your take on the importance of sustainable fashion and the danger of fast fashion? Well, it's very important. I mean, we have to teach the youth how to deal with it because sustainable fashion is something that we need to concentrate on more and it has to be, it, it impacts the next generation, how they live, how they use, how they recycle, super important. We still have a lot to discuss in this episode with you, Nina, but coming up, we meet with humanitarian Linda Cruz at COP28, driving climate action with global youths. Plus, we've got music in the studio, so stay tuned.